Hello, welcome to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Leo Hose, and our guest is Rocky Grudier. Welcome. Welcome back, Rocky. It's great to have you. You were here last week and shared a great testimony. Would you be able to share your testimony, maybe briefly this time, for those who don't know you? Sure, sure, I'd love to. So, um, my parents divorced when I was four, and so that caused a lot of uh, turmoil in my life from an early age. I uh, lived with a single mom, raising us three kids. And yeah, I'd say in, into my teen years, I really started to search, why am I here? You know, who is God? Because I always believed there was a God. And I had questions. Um, joining this rock band, it started to form a lot of uh, questions about life, writing music and thinking and um, writing poetry. and I just started this downward spiral as I was trying all these different things in life that, that weren't filling this gap, this hole that I had, this emptiness mm. of a deep rejection. And, and I say it's a, a God-shaped hole that only God can fill. Mm. And I was trying to fill it with relationships and partying and uh, being popular, but this was only leaving me more empty with, with every broken heart. Mm. And um, yeah, so I... I uh, started to notice a friend of mine in, in high school that she had changed. She mm. had just gone from kind of a sad person to she just carried this joy and this light in her life. And uh, one day I asked her how she could be so happy in a world like this. Mm. And she told me, Rocky, Jesus changed my life. Mm. And she invited me to her church, to her youth group. And I met Jesus myself and fell in love with Jesus and, and gave him my life. And he totally changed my life and mm. gave me the joy and the peace that I saw in Melissa. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's so much, um, even during this um, time of um, changing our hearts, isn't it? Because we can be really uh, affected by social media and things of, you know, com competition, trying to be self-centered and saying mm. that you'll be fulfilled if you have this and have that. And sure. how has God changed your heart the, of you know, how do you get that transformation? Well, it's all about talking to God. It's about getting to know Him through His Word, um, being in fellowship with other Christians, being, you know, amongst people who are walking with God and can help you grow. And you talking with God yourself and mm. getting to know Him through His Word, through reading His Word, through prayer, and through fellowship in a with other believers. Mm. Yeah. No, that's good. That's good because I think at different times in my life, I people put me a bit up on a pedestal because I've been in work with um, people with drug addiction and mental health, and, and sometimes you can become proud and you know not listen to people. And mm. but being in a community, like you said, it, it it I suppose sharpens each other, isn't it? Oh yes. Or sandpaper <laughs> ministry is why we talks about it. Right. <laughs> yes, community does help sharp, sharp, uh, take those sharp edges off of us, those rough edges. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's good to have accountability. You, you help each other grow. And yeah, and people can call out things they see in you, the good and the bad, and help you to see what maybe you don't see. And, and you can grow from that. Yeah, so doing it like correcting each other in love. In love. Sure. Yeah, which is not always easy because, <laughs> <laughs> because I think we live in a society where pain, they think, is harmful, but actually pain is actually growth, isn't it? We, right. we, we have a tendency of avoiding all pain, isn't it? That's right. Yes, our yeah. society, yes, is, wants to be comfortable. And yes, you, you said it. And yeah, we don't want to face these things that sometimes we don't want to face things that uh, may be hard to overcome or even to see in ourselves. But... If we do, then we're going to grow and we're going to be better for it. And other people are going to be better for it because we can influence them in a good way. And since we've overcome, then we can help others overcome these, these obstacles or sins in our lives. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I, I um, listened to one of the people I interviewed and he was saying that 
you, you love support, but also discipline, like, you know, you know to discipline like it, so that our hearts can be changed, that our hearts can, when we turn to Jesus, it's still a gradual conversion, isn't it? We've got oh, things in our you know, sure. childhood that we're a bit selfish or we have moods and all this, but it's, it's allowing God to change our hearts and allowing our Christian brothers and sisters to correct us in love. That's right. Yes, um, so something I've dealt with through my life from rejection early on is I uh, want to please people mm. and so I've had to learn to put boundaries um, and learn to say no <laughs> because otherwise you can be run ragged and you can burn out uh, doing everything that people ask you because you want to please them and have acceptance mm. yes and and so others have helped me see that uh, you know in community and so it's helped me to understand yeah, yeah, this is something that needs to change. Yes, well, that's an area I need to grow in, so <laughs> challenge me, brother. <laughs> All right, for sure. Yeah, for sure. no, that's, that's good yeah. because, um, because we're here to please God and yeah. to love. And, and people respect you more, actually, if you put boundaries because then they know where you start and where they begin. That's right. Yep. And yep. some people have been brought up with no boundaries, and so they, they haven't been taught, you know, what boundaries are, so some people need to be taught those boundaries. Yes, because yeah. um, you've learnt a lot through living in a community of YWAM. Right. Um, yeah, so that, that's a great, um, you know, you've got a great heart for mission. Yeah. yeah. How long have you been in YWAM for? Um, I've served in YWAM altogether about 15 years, and YWAM is youth with a mission. So. Um, it's basically training young people who want to get exposure to missions and get them, get them involved with local missionaries and churches overseas. Uh, and there's also local outreach that we do to the communities that for the young people that want to stay on. Um, yeah, so that's kind of a, in a nutshell yeah. what we do in YWAM. No, it's great. And in the next um, segment, I'll ask you more questions about YWAM. Great. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Stay with us and we'll be back after the break. Welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Rocky Grandia. He's a missionary for the Prayer Center. Welcome back, Thank Rocky. You. you were sharing about your, your heart change for Jesus, so you became a full-time missionary. That's right. Yeah. Tell us about uh, YWAM and your work and all those wonderful stories of conversion. Oh, well, the uh, amazing thing is I... Um, I didn't have really <laughs> much money growing up, yeah. so when God became my father, I saw His provision in my life uh, from an early, you know, from my early time at being a Christian. Um, wanted to go to Bible college, and so I went to Bible college, and I I worked, and I was paying for my first semester, and I said, I don't know how I'm going to keep this up, but then my my dad and my Grandma told me they would pay for the rest of my schooling. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, so that mm. was covered. And, and then, um, so I was preparing to be a missionary in Bible college. And then I went to Youth with a Mission in Australia. Well, I came here to Australia. Yes. <laughs> uh, the first time. And he provided everything, and, and he, he has ever since. He's always given me all that I need to, to go overseas and to work with young people and serve in the church. Yeah. yeah, wow. And what did you learn from YWAM, you know, like what, about young people? Well, working with young people is a lot of fun. It keeps you young. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm 43, uh, 43 years young. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, we, we love to go out and, and meet people and share our faith and their excitement and their, you know, their exuberance. It's contagious. And mm. people want to be around young people, and they want to hear what they have to say. 
because they're just so full of life and they, you know, they inspire us. And we mm. say, we think back when we were young and it's, you know, it's euphoric. And, but young people carrying a message of hope is so contagious. And so it's mm. great to get out there with them and, and just love people. And people are touched by young people coming in and serving them. You know, we've, we've done all kinds of things in YWAM to, to reach the community from uh, just handing out, you know, cold water on a hot day or popsicles or ice cream and then sharing God's love with them to, you know, we worked with orphans and we worked with street people, just loving them and, and meeting their needs physically and then sharing the love of God mm. through, through meeting those needs. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so you have a great faith in God's provision. When you see people in suffering, how, how do you deal with that? Yeah, well, of course, you, you want to help. And so you, you have to be wise how to do that, you know, and in each situation. And so that's why we partner with the local church and we partner with the local missionaries who are working with these people and they understand their background, they understand what's, you know, going on in their lives and, and can, you know, meet those needs in a practical way mm. that is helping them and not hurting them or, you know, just maybe mm. feeding uh, an addiction in some cases or, yeah. Yeah, that's great. So it encourages the, the local church. And it also means that when some people come to Jesus, they have somewhere to go after, like come closer to God. They have a community to support them, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. yeah. And how do you feel that we can deal with young people's um, skepticism and, and sense of entitlement? Yeah. Well, I think being real with them is the best, best way and, and showing them real love. And, you know, develop relationship because they, they're looking for real relationship, true relationship. They can see through, you know, things that are fake. And, and this generation really, they want the real thing. They, they don't want something halfway. They, they're all in when they're in. And so they want to see, is your faith, you know, they want to see a genuine faith. They want to see, you know, if what you're believing, are you really living it out? You know, are you willing to die for your faith? Are you willing to go you know, the extra mile to, to show Christ's love, or is it just mm. lip service? You know? Yeah, it's, it's like you said, it's laying down your life. And as I'm getting a bit older, a lot of <laughs> my friends say to me, oh, you know, Geraldine, you, you should retire. You should be comfortable. You, you've done so much mission work. You've done your bit for the world. And I kind of like, part of me wants to be comfortable, but a part of me feels that, I want to I want to follow Jesus, not be comfortable. Right. Yeah, I mean, we can retire when we get to heaven. I mean, we're going to have stuff to do in heaven, but <laughs> yeah, we can know that when we get to heaven, I, I did everything I could while I was here to reach the lost, to serve God faithfully, and we can get there and know and have that peace, yeah. you know, and, and satisfaction that, that we gave everything while we were mm. here. So quite a few people who watch our program are over 60. How can they reach the young people? Sometimes they go, oh, I don't know what to say or what to do. How, how, what, how do they approach young people? Uh, I mean, yeah, how do you approach anyone? You, you know, you just be yourself mm. and, and just love them. Show them kindness. Um, you know, uh, a lot of young people today are growing up without a mother or a father or even, you know, grandparents that are showing them any kind of care. And so if an older person is, is willing to invest in their lives, I'm sure they would find so much joy and, and love and want to give that back, you know, to, to someone who's giving them that time. Yes. Mm. And um, a challenge for older people is all these policies, you know, don't touch, don't talk about this, don't talk about that. Oh, wow. <laughs> And, um, you know, in the fear of litigation, that it kind of can paralyze the older people. Yeah, well, there's, there's um, community programs where they can be a part of where it's, it's all, you know, protected and yeah. it's a safe environment to interact with young people. Yes. I mean, a lot yeah. of church, you know, churches have those kind of activities. A lot of community yeah. programs are out there. Yes, yeah, that's good. Definitely. And it's good to be creative, isn't it? And, and not think, oh my gosh, you know, like, but trust and not have fear. 
Yeah. So, yeah. Definitely. In the prayer center, we're, we're beginning to um, get the, the younger with the older. Yeah. And have, they have like a ladies' day. Where they just had tea and, oh, and wonderful um, goodies, and, yes. and then the men are coming together in a group, and it's a range yeah. from young I'd, to old. I'd love to hear more about it, and we'll, we will do that after the break. Okay. <laughs> You've been watching Spirit of Life. Stay with us, and we'll be back after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Rocky Grudier. He's a missionary for the Prayer Center. Welcome back, Rocky. Thanks, Geraldine. Um, before you talk more about the Prayer Center, we'd love you to share a song, probably one of your songs that you sing at the Prayer Center. For sure, for sure. All right. This is, uh... Jesus, lover of my soul, Jesus, I will never let you go. You've taken me from the miry clay. You set my feet upon the rock. And now I know that I love you. I need you. Though my world may fall, I'll never let you go. My Savior, my closest friend, I will worship you until the very end. Jesus, lover of my soul, Jesus, I will never let you go. You've taken me from the miry clay. You set my feet upon the rock And now I know I love you I need you Though my world may fall I'll never let you go My Savior My closest friend I will worship you Until the very end I love you I need you Though my world may fall I'll never let you go My Savior My closest friend I will worship you Until the very end Thank you, that's beautiful Right Thank you, Rocky And yeah, so you're you're in the music ministry at the prayer minister, prayer center, aren't That's right. you? Yep. Prayer yeah. ministry. Yeah. Tell us about ministry. your experience of the prayer center. Well, it's been such a blessing in my life. Mm. Um, I came here about a year and a half ago, mm. and and got involved. Um, so the vision is, they they want to see revival come, mm. and so prayer is the focus. And we need to have repentance and, and praying in order to have revival. Mm -hmm. And the heart is that God loves His people and He wants to, to be close to His people and His people to know Him. So we do a lot of prayer, obviously. <laughs> it's called the Prayer Center. And then there's a lot of fellowship as well when we come together. It's a very uh, important part of when we come together. Is we usually have some food, at least some coffee together and, and biscuits, but that people are in community and mm -hmm. not just coming to a meeting, but they're coming to family and they're being part of family and we share our prayer needs with each other and we really lift each other up uh, to the Lord and, and oh, really great. have powerful times of worship. And, uh, yeah, that's yeah. great. Mm. And, um, and where, what's the address of the place and what time are your services? Okay, so Sunday morning service, 11 o'clock. It's uh, 1154 Burwood Highway. Mm. And then on Monday nights is our prayer focus 
and that starts at 7.30, mm. and that's um, worship and prayer. Yep. Yeah. And people can just drop in and yeah, Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Most welcome, definitely. And, and what um, is your heart um, for worship? Because being a worship leader, yeah. yeah. Well, look, worship is a lifestyle. Mm. And I believe it comes from our heart that, you know, we want to worship God with our lives and everything we, we say, everything we do, everything we, we're thinking. And so from that will flow the worship, mm. you know. And, um, yeah, I love to lead worship and I love to lead people into God's presence mm. because that's where we find life. That's where we, we get recharged, we get energized. Mm. To keep serving him is being, by being in his presence. That's the best place to be. Yes, it'd be great if you could say a prayer for the audience, and um, you know, as you feel led, and then I'll, ha and then we'll wind up. Okay, I end. love that. But, Thanks, yeah. Geraldine. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this amazing opportunity to share your love with all these beautiful people that you love, God. And Father, we ask that your presence would be rich in their lives, in our lives. God, that we would live for you with our lives, with everything we say, with everything we think and do. We'd want it to be worship to you, God. To know you is life. And that's why we're here, to, to know you, to love you, and to serve you and worship you. And we will do that for eternity. And, and God, we look forward to being face to face with you for eternity and getting to thank you for all that you've given us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for loving us and drawing us to you even before we knew you. You loved us. And God, we, we give you all the praise and thanks in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you for that praise. And for, for people in the prayer center, do they have to be of a certain age to come to the prayer center? Not at all. All yep. ages welcome. Any background, denomination, all welcome. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. I wish you all the best with your adventures, your music, and your church at the prayer center. Thank you. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Stay tuned next week. Goodbye and God bless you. <laughs>